This isn't for the faint-hearted, especially those who fear the creepy crawlies, but not 21-year-old Zariel Prime. Instead of running away from these creatures, he runs to them. He sees them as beauties, gems, and ambassadors of Trinidad and Tobago's wildlife. Zariel's interest has made him a bit of a social media inspiration. Many look to his pages to see what other creatures he has discovered. Born and bred in the northeast of Trinidad, he says in order to find these creatures, he simply walks into the forest. He spends hours searching and researching. So, Inspire TT team, we are here with Zariel Prime in Wallafield, a young man who has a passion for wildlife. And we said today we're going to share his story and his inspiration where he's actually on Facebook, getting a lot of following. People are interested in knowing what our local creatures look like. And Zariel, it's a pleasure for you to invite us here at your home in Wallafield. And I know a little later we will go on a, a bit of a talk. Uh, mm -hmm. Zariel, tell me something. Why wildlife? How, uh, you're now 21 years old. How long have you been in wildlife and why wildlife? Because people see snakes and bugs and they are afraid. But you're actually the one who would pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what got me interested in wildlife actually mm -hmm. was around when I was four years old. I remember I was playing around in the garden, around sand, just digging up. And I found a small black snake. Mm -hmm. Now, at that age, I didn't know what a snake was. So I picked it up and carried it to my father. <laughs> and in Instead of him killing it, he took it out of my hand and placed it back in the garden and he told me what a snake was. Now I accustomed seeing dogs, cats with legs and things, so seeing an animal without legs that was not a worm was very interesting to me. I was, I was fascinated by this creature, I went, I looked, I got books, looked at pictures of snakes and I told myself I want to see what, uh, one again, a bigger one, I want to have one. Hmm. Yeah, and that's what actually got me interested. And then catching the lizards on the wall, learning how they move and those kind of things. So you had no formal training? No, no. I, at that, from a young age, I didn't meet anyone who had the same interest that I had. From five to six is when I actually been to the zoo, and that was around twice. Mm -hmm. But it got me interested. But the, the only thing that disappointed me with the zoo is I didn't see much of our local animals. I didn't know how to identify the local ones from the foreign ones. Mm -hmm. At that age, I didn't know how to read the signs, the, the signs on the thing. So, I, and so I decided to go, want to go and look for myself yes. to see the younger ones. So we, it had gardens, places. I would always go turn over rocks and see, see in. And then one day I saw a a guti, up up grand up um grandy. Yes, and I know. First time I knew that we don't have any small animals alone. We have some big animals. <laughs> so that was the main training. I out in the forest. We went and lived Grandy. And from there in Kaulessa, coal, coal mine Kaulessa mm -hmm. is where it took off. I would sometimes spend nights out in the forest uh, finding venomous snakes. I, see, we ha I had a collection of scorpions at one time, wow. which was one of the first animals. Uh, Keep. And then from there it went on from scorpions to fishes to snakes to maniku, all them kind of things. So tell me something, these things that you are fascinated, people are fearful of, I mean, is there any fear? There's no reason to say, have a fear of it. In, in my mind it's like, you have more, you have more to fear from a man pointing a gun to your head, then you go in and see, uh, let's say, uh, the most feared snake map of Yes. Um, it's just in a corner, it's not coming towards you. If it is, if, if it do happen to come your way, you could run faster than it. Mm -hmm. So it, in my mind, it was irrational to fear this animal. It, and I didn't have no reason to fear it. Yes, I'm up if he could kill me with one bite, but it's not going to bite me if I'm not, go, if I'm not within its striking range. Mm -hmm. So it didn't make any sense for me to fear the, these creatures. 
at your age, I mean, and you say that, you know, you started at a very young age with wildlife, local wildlife. What about friends? You had friends with the same interests or how was that? Or you were just a lone <laughs> ranger? Well, for uh, when I was younger, I didn't really have friends who was interested in the same thing I was interested in. Mm -hmm. So my friends at that age, we got disconnected. But until like recently, like 20, when I turned 18, I found some friends who was interested in what I interested in. And we sometimes go on adventures. This year we started to go on adventures. We started to post more. We started to look for these creatures and all those things. But growing up at that young age, I didn't have friends to say, but my sisters. Three of my sisters, they always came on the adventures with me. They always had my back. I had their back. They were always there. When I say a snake there, they come in to see, come in to help me pick it up. When we go fishing, they would come lying thing, you forget this, they, they always had my back. So it's not like I had friends to support me in it, more my family. But, but you talk about these adventures, did you venture in these areas alone and where, what, which, what are the far reaching areas that you have gone in regards to looking for local wildlife to explore and to and sort of be interested in to see what, well, how they operate and how they, how they operate in the wild? Well, we haven't gone much areas yet. But most of the adventures took place in Grandy, in the, the nearby forest of Grandy, and most of, and very few times I went alone, because it's not wise to go in the forest alone. Mm -hmm. So I, as, most of the times it was with my sisters, or with my father, and we would go out mainly to go picking fruits or or just walk, just take mm -hmm. a walk, and we would see. A uh, cocorite snake on the trail, or we would see agoutis or deers. Sometimes we would see quanks or monkeys, or those kind of things we would see on the trail. But the areas we explore was like Grandi, Tamana, um, Guanapo, Brasso Seco, and Blanchichers. Hmm, interesting. That's, that's still a wide. That's still <laughs> yeah. a wide area. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So guys, look at him. We have at Zarel Prime, and um, we are sharing his story. He's young. He's 21 years old, but he has a passion for our wildlife and he has been doing this since he was four years old so guys i want you to like share comment on our facebook page share the the, the the page to to someone a friend share the content as well to a friend you know like it and you know i mean most of all inspire tt coming to you here you know sharing positive stories of you know trinidadians trin begonians let me correct that and uh, we are here with just one of the many persons we will be interviewing so zarel tell me something you are young, you are 21 years old. I mean, what, what is the future for Zerl? I, I know before you were talking about, you know, getting involved in, uh, getting involved to become involved with the Emperor Valley Zoo or even some sort of wildlife initiative. I know that is one of your dreams. Tell me what, what, what exactly is the future for you going forward in this field? There was a lot of challenges that I, I had to think about. Mm -hmm. One, there was growing up, I, uh, from age four to eight, I was heavily thinking about conservation. And I didn't understand what conservation was. In the village, in the, the, the village that we grew up, that nearby, they, all the people there was hunters. Everybody was hunters. So sometimes we would bounce up the hunters in the trail and they would tell us where some animal is. If I have to find these animals, I have to hunt them. I have to think like a hunter, how these hunters just mm -hmm, think. Mm -hmm. So instead of being on, like there's groups of people that were in conservation that would be like, conserve and don't hunt, hunting bad. Some people would be like that. Well, I see it as both could work in tandem. So in the future in this, what I would really like to do, and from my own experience, also when I was younger, there was something that uh, did we, we did local fish and certain snakes. We, would, we had this four by, four by four pen and we put around four coral snakes in, in there. Around the area, some um, false mapapees or cat eye snake used to come around and we used to feed them to the coral snakes because coral snakes only eat snakes, yes. mainly eat snakes. And we noticed this, this, the coral snakes had to breed in the pen. 
So then I realized the best way to conserve is if I breed it in captivity and release into the wild, which had me thinking why people don't do this. It also had me thinking why people, the reason, I, so I began to look, is, are chickens endangered? Mm -hmm. Chickens, when I type up how much chickens, there are around 24 billion chickens worldwide. Mm -hmm. So I say people don't really hunt chickens like how they hunt other wildlife. Sure. So I got to think, why they don't farm wild, our local wildlife? So people will stop hunting. True. If, if you could go in the grocery and get a, a pong ao guti, easy, easy in the grocery, you, you wouldn't study about um, how to set trap, yeah. how to wait whole night to go and get uh, a guti, and as if if you find it. So I, so I would like to breed wildlife, well, local animals. Yeah. But not to breed them like how they, how they mass produce these goat, chicken, and sheep. No, but do it humanely. Mm -hmm. So tell me something. You are a young man with a vision and with what you want to do. I mean, there are twenty-one years old, twenty-one year old. I mean, citizens who are looking into this video, right? Looking at this video right now. Um, what would you say to them? You know, like you know, a level of inspiration, like. How do you find your passion? Well, how I found my passion, because I look at what interests me. Mm -hmm. And when you could go, like, it interests me as well as I went into it one time. So if there are people that are interested, young people like myself, that are interested in wildlife, do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just do it. Go, go find something if, if they are if family holding your back like I have a friend his family don't like some of the creepy crawlies he he want to have but he goes and find those creepy crawlies anyway not as if he keeping them mm -hmm. but he goes and find them he studies about them he reads about them he go take pictures or whatever sometimes I take pictures and he call me to say send the pictures or whatever and he's studying up the up upon them so when he goes to do it to, to get in and study breed um, conservation facilities and whatever all these breeding facilities that he want to have with for the animals um, nature reserves he doing when he ready he could just go into it so if there are people that are wanting to do it they find themselves in the position to do it Zario has his Facebook page called the what the wildlife the wildlife master the wildlife master <laughs> and on that page there are a lot of interesting content as well you know with him on trails across this region in, well, in North Trinidad yeah. soon every day except Sundays every yeah. day except Sundays I'll be posting something yeah so so guys definitely look out for what Zarel has up you know here because I, I saw you had snakes spiders yes um, crayfish you had so many different things on yes. that page and uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to see that from a different perspective, especially for a young man like you doing something like that. All right, so we are going to finish this part of the interview as usual. Uh, I do the first part, Michael does the second. And um, Michael is going to go on the trail a bit. We're going to go on the trail with Michael a little bit. And we're going to see what we find. And um, we're going to take a look around in Zarel's little yard here and see what we can get. Or we might take a walk up the river and see what we can get. So stay tuned. The Inspire TT team is here with wildlife master <laughs> welcome back to inspire tt i'm here with zariel so what are we walking to what are we going to see here well in this in this tank, uh -huh. I have two red claw crayfish I caught in the Matarita River. I a red a red claw crayfish. Red claw crayfish. I guess I assume any claws red. Yes. <laughs> All right. Before we go on fishing the crayfish, if you like any content here on Inspire TT, we're trying to build the tribe, trying to build our network. Share that video. Well, these apparently they're invasive species in this country. Yeah. So. They are originated from Australia and Papua New Guinea. When you say invasive species, explain that to our audience. They came down 
here through the pet trade and people release them in the in the wild they get too big for the tank or they couldn't take care of them anymore or they escape the facility it had and an invasive species as as far as i remember from my science classes as they kind of push out the local inhabitants and take over the space and the environment yes because they are more aggressive yes. than the local species right yes yes exactly this yes. is this is one of the invasive species we have. This is the male red claw crayfish. And as you can see, the reason why they call it red claw because the males mm -hmm. have a red color on the claws. Is it red claw on both sides? Okay. Yes. Now the thing about it, that, that red is not really covered by shell, it's covered by skin. It's like a crab, okay, mate? <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if you be reckless. Oh, wow, it's soft, wow. This is amazing, wow. Yes. So the, here is hard. Yes, on the top here, it's hard. Right. And but this is soft red like is, skin, is soft. guys. It's soft like skin. Wow. So what is that like? A Something display, it used to feel wrong or? Well, the red color is to attract the females. Okay. The more red they have, the more females would come to them. It looks like a blue lobster. <laughs> yes. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you a custom hole in them? Yes. Yes. Okay, and we say this is male, that's why I'm saying him, because he said because the red claws. And the yeah. other way you could tell is by these nodes on the back legs. Okay. Females have these nodes higher. But this, the, the males, males have it on the back? Have it on the back legs. Okay. Yes. So how are we holding this guy? How are we holding? You put your finger right where I had mine. Here? Yes. And hold him firm. Because when you flick it, it's strong. It's strong. Well, it may hopefully jump back right in the habitat. Hopefully. hopefully. Otherwise, we will have a crayfish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't joking, <laughs> boy. Wow. Am I squeezing them too hard? I... Um, yeah, don't, don't squeeze too hard <laughs> and don't have to do too soft. But this is one of the many. So, this is my first catch and release experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? So, we can release them now, right? Yes. Yeah. Is there anything else we like to tell the audience about this crayfish, this little guy? It tastes very good. <laughs> and it's invasive? Yes, and it's invasive. <laughs> I guess that's why you have him in his own habitat here, right? Yes. Okay. Bye, buddy. Hi Zariel, we're out in nature. What area is this? This is the Guanapo Heights. The Guanapo River, as you can see. All right, but this is the Guanapo Heights. Or and the this, Heights of Guanapo, some people call it. And this is the ideal area for what? What are we looking for exactly? Anything. <laughs> anything. We, you could see almost anything around these parts. You could see from, from coral snakes to lap to even, um, well, even toucans, parrots, macaws, those kind of things you could see up here. And this is your element, right? Yes, this is my element. This is where I thrive. Yes, yeah. for, for one second, right? If you're watching the video, you like any content here on Inspire TT, share the video at the bottom of the screen. So, Zariel, I mean, I know you spoke to Otto about it earlier on. I mean, we could reiterate some points, but you got into nature and you got into this kind of, how you say, adventure lifestyle at a very young age. And it still, still still seems to be very appealing to you now. What is the attraction? I mean, what not what what you could not love about this? Well, guys, I mean, this you, is, you know it. here. But well, we, it took us five minutes to get from where we were with Zariel earlier on today to here, and this is amazing. I guess you're a product of your environment. You could say so. Yes, yes, I'm a product of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> With COVID-19, a lot of people not interacting, a lot of people not out. As somebody who's very much immersed into the environment and, and these types of spaces, they've been saying internationally that the environment is kind of um, rebooting and starting to become flourishing once again. Have you been seeing that in these types of areas? Well, in this area, this area has always been flourishing. Mm -hmm. So 
to, to say rebooting in certain parts of the world, not everywhere, and in Trinidad, you only very, very few places, but it has been on a steady, as far as my observation, mm -hmm. have, have, as far as I have seen in the places I've been to, while life is growing, not decreasing. What are your words of advice for parents out there who have kids who are very much interested in wildlife, but also very fearful and protective? Hmm. Don't be too protective. Let them get dirty. Uh -huh. Let them experience the mud. And then wash them off when they come back. Don't get too at attached to it. Let them experience the, the creepy crawlies. Let them experience all of that, but be, but be careful, don't let them handle the deadly things. Okay. Wait till they have more experience in the small things before they go to the big things. Is there any deadly things in this environment I should be looking out for? Yes. <laughs> there's a yes. lot of deadly creatures. There's really? snakes, there's scorpions, there's even bees you could find now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are deadly creatures around here. So you have to be wary mm -hmm. of, of these Creepy crawlies, as some people would say. When you come into a space like this, and if you see a little, you see pollution, and you see bottles, you as a Trinidadian, Trinidadian citizen, Trinidad and Tobago citizen, how you feel when you see, if you come into an environment like this and you see a lot of pollution? Because I'm very impressed with the people of the area. Yes, there are a few bottles, but it's not as dirty as some other places in Trinidad and Tobago. How do you feel? Well, I believe it needs some fixing up to do in this country when it comes to the mentality of people in this country. They have to know when to clean up their own mess. Mm -hmm. Their own mess. Literally clean up their own mess. And most of the times I, I believe in this country like to shift blame mm -hmm. quick. And we like to blame other people for a lot of things. When I come into an environment like this, depending on how much pollution and thing it is, if, if I am able to clean it, I will clean it. But most of the time, I haven't been to areas that are heavily polluted. Mm. That is able for me to clean it up. Like around here, where I come often, and I see some pollution, I would clean up. This is amazing. I mean, to me personally, it's very um, silent. It's very picturesque. It's a meditative space here. What do you think about when you come into nature like this? As a young person in Trinidad and Tobago. Home. That's why I think when I come into a place like this, uh -huh. I think of home. This is my country. This mm -hmm. is where I born, where I raised, and I have places so beautiful like this. All right, guys, we're walking in the, the forest here in Guanapo, I'm saying, and um, we box up this little guy. Sariel, what's, what's this we're looking at here? This is one of the, well, one of the deadly animals I told you about, the uh, yeah. scorpion. Your yeah. eyes are really trained because I didn't see this guy and I, he, he, he found him. Yeah. yeah well, they are great at camouflaging. Mm -hmm. if you get, they camouflage good on the, on the forest floor. They look like a piece of rotten wood or a piece of a leaf or something. And at night, they act, they, they when, when it's a full moon, mm -hmm. you could barely see it because the light of the full moon also causes it to camouflage. And this is a venomous creature. A venomous creature. This it's would send you to the hospital. A brown scorpion. Yes, and it's a female. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm not wearing boots <laughs> because I didn't see this guy on the ground. Um, Otto? <laughs> uh, Otto is a trained bushman, so. I mean, I took it on himself, but I really didn't see this guy and I have all my glasses. And what would you tell kids out there who might be into interacting? In... This is a wild creature, guys. I'm not getting any close because I'm not trained. Ooh. I don't have experience dealing with something like this. I'll I leave, would say I'll leave that to the experienced persons around. Yeah. What do you tell them, parents and kids out there who may be in nature and maybe interacting with animals like this? Well, I will tell them only if you have experience interact with an animal like this, because this, this is very dangerous. They could, they are very quick at stinging. Mm -hmm. And depending on the individual, you could react very quick to the venom. Okay. They, they are not to mess around with. So. 
So warning guys, this is not this this is a serious creature. This is something that could send you to the hospital, you could even die. So this is a disclaimer here on the for the inspired TT claim. If you're going out in the bush and you're going out, go with experienced people who could understand and interact with creatures like this. Don't just go out on your own and try to do your own thing. That's one of the warnings. But that doesn't mean that fair aspect means that you don't go out and you don't try, you know. You need to understand and respect the nature in order for you to protect it too as well. Which is what we're trying to do here on Inspire TT. So we have it. This is tadpoles of the yellow throat frog. I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah it is, it actually is. You see the arm. You see the shape on it. So guys, for those who see this, this is the tadpoles of the yellow throat frog. Um, some of us, I mean, you could Google it, because you might be thinking if the frog in your yard is actually a beautiful creature when you see it in the wild. So we're going to put them back, you know, because we conserve nature. And we have four, we have one extra, one, one more. Yeah. All right, Zariel, this is my final question and final thoughts. Um, to inspire others out there, to understand your passion for the environment. That's why we reach out to you, because clearly you have a, 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 a passion for the environment, nature, especially Trinidad environment. What do you tell people out there to get involved to protect the environment? There are many ways you could protect the environment. Don't always look at it from a narrow point of view. And you, you see it in, in nature. Things help out each other. I mean, it may not be willingly, mm. but it may just be a, a cause and effect. They do something, they get something in return. So if you're really focused, if you're really serious about getting involved in nature, get involved. Mm -hmm. Don't wait until it's too late. Until we have no nature Un to protect. Yeah, until it's gone. Yeah. Don't see about it through a narrow mindset. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people that are saying you shouldn't kill wildlife. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't keep wildlife as pets. Now, I believe you shouldn't overkill or illegally hunt animals. And I believe you shouldn't illegally keep pets. But there are legal ways to go about these things and right ways to go about these things. So if you're really interested in getting involved in wildlife, what are you waiting for? <laughs> and with that, Zariel, I want to wrap. I want to thank you for being here on Inspire TT. One of the main points he says is help. Help us build this channel. Help us build our network. Help us build our tribe. See at the bottom of the screen, all it takes is to share the video. We have amazing content here on Inspire TT. You could go across to the Facebook page. You could go across to the YouTube page and maybe you could see content that you didn't see before and help us build this community and this network. Because essentially here, us here on Inspire TT, Otto myself, we're actually trying to inspire others to start protecting, start preserving, start to understand and motivate you to protect Trinidad and Tobago, to get involved and to have a better future for us here in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you, Zariel, once again for being here on Inspire TT. Thank you, Otto, for being here on the camera and taking all them insect bites and things. Thanks to the Inspire TT team. See you next time.